Greetings, brethren. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to see you because I know that you have the love of truth. You love the truth. And these are, you are the type of people I want to be around. I have to be in the world for a time, but it's only for a time. Thank the Lord. It's only for a time. Now, when I prepare my sermons, I've set goals for myself. Our God is a goal set. He sets goals. He's got a prize set up for us that we're supposed to reach out to attain. So I set goals. One of my goals is not to break down and cry in front of you right now because this is so good. Not that my sermon is so good. I'm not saying this, what I'm going to be talking about. Our God is so good. He's so merciful. He's so gracious. He, he, he does not want to hold back. But the, if we don't give ourselves to the Lord, he cannot go against his own character. He cannot. But I tell you what. Now, when we were watching those videos, I said, I guarantee this. And I, I know it's something I always say. I guarantee. I guarantee. The reason I say that is because I can't guarantee anything in myself. But... I have seen that we can make guarantees in Christ Jesus. He's already got the victory. Now he's saying, come with me, come. Separate yourself from the world. Come to me, I've got the victory. All you have to do, the way we do have to do something. See, that's what my, my son was trying to say when he, he came back and corrected himself. He said, well, we got to do more. We have to believe in Christ. But what I have seen what I've tried to t teach my kids is what we have to do is come to Christ. See, people say, well, you, works don't get you to heaven. No, they don't get you to heaven. But you do have to do something. You have to come to the one who can take you all the way to glory. He can do it. He's the one. But you've got to come to him. Uh, I asked the Lord to help me with this. Because his mercies, what happened was, I've got this going on in my head, and then I'm preparing sermons for, for a, a church, and everything I'm looking at is his mercies. Everything's getting filtered through this. So, I see this is a very large subject. And then I'm giving 30 minutes. We got a clock up here. I'm giving 30 minutes to filter everything into 30 minutes. Everything about, well, it can't happen. So what I'm going to do is, my, my next goal, other than not crying, is to be able to, to point you to God and see how merciful he is. That, that's what I want to do. When I get done here, I don't want you to be thinking about me or thinking about anything else except for, well, I want you to really... Now, we could do this. We could take our minds, and we could set them on things above, and we could do this together. We could, we could sit here, and we could look at this and say, I am, gonna, I am going, I am a king of my, God has given me something here. He's given me a kingdom, and I'm the king. And I'm going to dictate the way things are going to happen. So this is what's going to happen here. We're going to focus on God's mercies. We're going to focus on how good he is. We've already been preached how good he is, how his grace helps us along. And it's all because of his mercies. Brother, we wouldn't even be here today if it wasn't for his mercy. If he wasn't a merciful God, we wouldn't even be here. There would be nothing for us to talk about. Or everything else would not even be in place. But he is merciful. So we do have something to talk about because of his mercies. So I want, well, I want to start off here. I'll read my text, Romans 12, 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye present your bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Right? Well, I left something out. Did I, I left something out there. If you really take this to heart and are serious about this, you would realize really quickly, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, is a large, very large thing to do. And you're not going to be able to do it on your own. I, we 
have seen people who've seen the truth and grabbed a hold of it and fell away. What happened? Somewhere along the line, they started putting emphasis on themselves. And their strength quickly ran out. And their focus came off of God onto something else. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. See, it's by his mercies that he, we receive grace. It's by his mercies that we have strength. It's by his mercies that we come to Christ. And he, he's distributing Christ, Christ Jesus. This is, this is God, God's working through him. Christ Jesus, he's, throwing, he's giving out the mercies, pinpoint precision. See, Brother, Brother Michael talked about this. This isn't like a, a, you go to a, a fair or, or, or they just throw these candy out or whatever. Just, whew, just to everybody. Everybody gets a little bit. So, no, that, that's not how these mercies work. And I'm going to show you that. Matthew 25, 4, we're talking about when a servant, the, a man came back and he called his servants. He called his servants to him. He said, now come to me. And he delivered his goods to them. One of them got five talents. Now I know there's some children in here that are pretty good at math. Follow along with me. You, you're, you're good at math. I know you are. I can see it in your eyes. Five talents. You keep track of this. Five talents. Another two. And another one. Now they had zero to begin with, okay? Zero. So already... Already, we hit, this is a good, a good master. He's already given it. They had nothing. Now they got something. Something's better than nothing, right? See, I knew you were good at math. <laughs> then the next one had one talent. And he had zero also. Now there's a reason why he only had one talent. But the one... He took his good, he took his five, he doubled them. The next one had two and he doubled them. The next one, he, it says he dug a hole. And it doesn't say, not, and this is the way I think. I think if I'm going to dig a hole, I'm going to go and get a shovel or something. I'm going to make sure whatever I'm burying is going to stay good. And, it doesn't even say he got a shovel. The guy's so lazy, he just, what did he do? He just like, took some dirt with his hand and threw it down the, the point is, he did not care. He was so lazy, he didn't even care about what the master gave him. So a long time went by. Is the master coming back? We don't know. But he did. He did come back. Now, what did, what did you do with the, my goods? I gave, these are my goods I gave to you. Well, the first one, he had five and then... He got five more. So the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with few. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into my kingdom with joy of the Lord. Now, this is the way I think about it. Now, I'm thinking, now you stand right here, because we're not done with you yet. You just got, you just doubled, you had five, you just doubled it. You just stand right here. Then the same with the next one. Had two, doubled it. Then with the third one, what did you do with my goods? Oh, I knew you were hard, hard mass. Wow. Brother, he had zero before, then he had one. Tell, tell me, is that one better than a zero? This is a good master. Where did he get this idea that he was a hard master? Where did that come from? Well, He was wicked, that's why. He was wicked and slothful. He said, hey, listen to me. At least you're so lazy. At least you should have just taken it down to the exchangers and paid them to do something with it. They're going to take a percentage of it, but at least you could have did something. But he did nothing with it. He, had no, he, got, he was shown no mercy. But the ones who took what God gave him and did something with it, 
here we are. The guy had five, and he doubled them. So now he's got ten. So he says, you know what? I'm going to take what you got, that one. I'm going to give. Okay, let's interview these guys. The first one, hey, what do you think about your master? Oh, he's a good master. He gave me, I had nothing. And then he gave me five talents. And then I doubled them. And, and does it say he took away? He did, does it say he took away from them? He just said, now that you, I, what you did, now I'm coming. It's going to even get better now for you. I'm going to give you more. You've been faithful for a little. I'm going to give you more. So this guy, he's like, this is a good master. And not only did he do that, then because I doubled it, he gave me a bonus. And then the next one, same thing. And then the third one, oh, he's hard. No mercy with this guy. Well, he was a wicked and evil servant. See, brethren, God has given us something. He, he has given us life, eternal in Christ Jesus. He's given us to rule over these bodies. Now, what are we going to do when Christ comes back? Are we going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Because, because of his mercy, we can do well. We can do well with what God has given us. He's given us all a little bit different, but the same thing is true to each one of us. We had nothing, and now we have something to work with. So what are we doing with it? Well, see, the world, they take it for themselves. They, what they do is like, is like the man who threw it into the dirt and just go on their way. That's what the world does. But see, not, not us, brethren. This is too big for us. We are not going to do this. God is preparing us to be faultless, to stand before him. And we're not going to throw that in the dirt. When we die or when Christ returns, it doesn't matter which one. Those of you who have been in, who have aged, know that the time is coming short. Little ones, it doesn't matter. Your time is coming short too, soon. Doesn't matter who you are, this time is coming short. And we want to be ready when he comes back. We want to be able to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And we can because his mercies are for those who you put yourself into this. And he's going to give you the mercies to do what he has called you to do. By his mercies. That's what my text says. So don't be afraid of this, brethren. No matter what it takes. And it will take God's mercies to do this, what, it what we have to do. But no matter what it takes, throw yourself into it. Amen. I know you're here today because you've thrown yourself into it. The world, they're doing all kinds of things. But in the end, will it matter? That's the point. What they're giving themselves to, will it matter? We must be with Christ. In Christ, we are now given much and much is expected of us. The key to remember here is that we are not on our own. See, the power we need to continue requires mercy, and he's got it. Brother Victor Knowles talked about this. It's like when he gives us mercy, it's like a little drop out of a, a sea of mercy that he has. By the mercies of God, present your, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Sounds impossible? Well, it is. On your own. It is, it, it is impossible. It's by God's mercies that we are able, able to overcome Amen. the world. God, he's not just throwing his mercies out. He's, he's placing them strategically in the saints, as we give ourselves, mercy and grace comes. It's by his mercy we receive grace. You can see that. I know you can see that. From the flesh, this view is too hard. This, the flesh, well, that's how the flesh reasons it. This, oh, this is too hard. Hard master. See, God wants to be known, and he's not a hard God. He's a merciful God. Oh, yeah, wrath can come unto those wicked and lazy servants who do not give themselves to God. 
But that's because they can't get past themselves. It's impossible to do what God asks of us if all we can see is ourselves. We want to get past ourselves. It's like this is a this is like a hurdle that we got to jump first. Amen. We are capable of doing it, but we can't just say, "Oh, well, that's a tall hurdle right there." What happens is as you run towards that hurdle, and you give it all you got. Next thing you know, you're soaring over that hurdle. What happened there? God picked you up and took you over that hurdle. But you got to give it. You got to give it your all. You can't just look at that. Oh, it's too, too hard. This is our reasonable service. Reasonable. This, we just, we start out here giving our lives. So this is bigger than us, brethren, I admit. This is unto God's glory. He, I think this was said already, but we don't, he doesn't owe us anything. We owe him everything. That's why it's, that's why it's reasonable to give your, your, your bodies as a living sacrifice because our bodies don't belong to us. We owe him everything. Now, our flesh fights against our spirit, and our new man, it will war against our old man. But it's a fight, wor it's worth fighting, brethren. It's a battle worth fighting for. God sees our fight, and because he sees it, we receive grace when we need it. By his mercies. We must not cave in to our flesh. Our old man, or we will find ourselves separated from Jesus, our Savior, and be condemned. We will be condemned. Being condemned does not give God any glory. Eternity is at stake here. People may argue about, well, is it right for me to do this? Can, well, can I do that? Can, is it okay if I, I mean, that's not, does the Bible say anything against this? Oh, my goodness, we're getting so far beyond that when we give our bodies as a living sacrifice. These are foolish discussions. When you give your, your body as a living, living sacrifice, we're no longer discussing whether or not we should do this or do that. We're discussing how high can we fly in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're not down here playing in the sandbox with the babies. Can I have this toy or can I have that toy? Is it okay for me? To... No, no, no. Have done with the childish things, the lesser things. We must not be caught up in these foolish things. We are not debaters. We're not debtors to the flesh. Romans 8, 12, we owe God. We are called believers because we believe God. Well, how do you believe God? Well, first of all, you got to know God. you got to know his ways, his attributes, what he's doing. Throw yourself Thrust yourself into God's word and into knowing God. You, you'd think that people, you would think that God was hiding somewhere. The way people act and the way that people talk. He's showing us himself. We are here working, flourishing by his mercies. We believe he will give us power that is needed to do what it what God wants done. So God's the point. Amen. Oh, that takes pressure off us, brethren. No, that takes pressure off us. I had so much pressure on myself when I first started speaking. When Brother Given so graciously gave me a position to, to, to speak. I am thankful for this. But it was helpful for me when I, took, when I stopped looking at myself and what I can do and what I can't do. And started looking at what he can do. When we can see God is the point, the pressure's off. It, it releases us. We had, we had these burdens beaten down on us, and they were just released. And now we're set free. 
No more worries, brother. No more. Yeah, see, the world, the world comes up with songs because they want to be like this. Don't worry. Be happy. All the stuff, you know. It's like, whatever. I saw you worry. Worrying comes when you can't see Christ. When yourself becomes the main point and you can't see God anymore, worries come. Why do people worry? I tell you why they worry. I tell you why I've worried. Let me just... I won't point at nobody else. I'll tell you why, why I worry. When I have forgot who I am in Christ Jesus. When I, when I remember who I am in Christ Jesus, uh, the weights come off. So that's what we're doing here this week. This, for these three days, right? We're focusing on God. We're re- spiritually, we're, we're building one another up in our most holy faith. Soon, brethren, very soon. The world will be gone. And all the pressures of the world, 2 Peter 3.12, all the pressures of the world will be gone. Then we'll be, what are we left with? We can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. God is not a hard taskmaster. He is not. This is God's salvation that he is working out in Christ Jesus We are coming along with him. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing can stop God from doing what he purposes. And this is what he's purposing. So it is reasonable for us to find out what God wants and to actively go after it. You won't do that getting caught up in the world. The world will not help you along with this. So we have, a, we have a war cry, brethren. Not all will, but yours be done, O Lord. That is our war cry. That is where we get strength in looking at what God wants and coming along with him. He wants us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. His mercies are abundant and is what we need. People talk about that every... You know what I need? What I, re- I could use a new car. See, that's how big people think in the world. That's about as, about as high as they get. I, if I could just win the lotto, I would give some of the money to the church, and I would have what I need. We need his mercies. And when you see that you have his mercies, his mercies are pulled out on his people, you're released from the bonds of sin. You're released from those things that weight you down. You're no longer bound to, well, who am I in the world? What is, what's my plan? What's my plan in the world? What does God have planned for me? He has nothing planned for you, brother. Except for to give your, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Have you done that? Well, you found your plan. Right there's your plan, brother. And his mercies are great. David knew this. David said, for his mercies are great. 2 Samuel 24, 14. He's compassionate to his people, brother. He's compassionate. He has compassion on the people he loves. If it was not so, right now we would already be dead. We would have no hope. As we do the right thing in the sight of our Lord, he will bless us with power to get it done. As we commit ourselves. His name is at stake. It's not about us. It's about him. And we glory that he has chosen us to be a part. He plucked us out of the muck and mire. We didn't even know we were in the muck and mire until we got cleaned up and was able to see clearly. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God 
to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Not our purpose. Really, we are in, insignificant to what the purpose of God is. So we're just thankful. We're a thankful people that we're a part of what he is doing. We do not need to depend on the thing, what things look like. Things are going to get bad, brother. If we don't die and we continue on, we've already seen it. It doesn't take long to look at the news and know that things are getting bad. Unless you're just a complete idiot. I'm not calling you an idiot. I just say, if you, if you are. You, you, if you are. You probably don't know that things are getting bad, but they're getting bad. The world doesn't see God. It doesn't want God. It doesn't want to be, it doesn't want God's ways. It doesn't want to have anything to do with God. But see, this is the, we are partakers of his mercy. The reason we can see God, the reason we know God, the reason Sister Melissa shaking her head yes right now. The reason she's doing that is because she loves God. It's his mercy that has enabled her to do that. So we depend on his mercies. Things look really bad. At times, for us, individuals, it can get bad. Our health can fail. Our finances can dry up. Our worldly possessions can be gone and well, how long was it, Nikki? A couple minutes. All of a sudden, pfft, everything's gone. But if that was your, I, I met people that the worldly possessions meant a lot to them. And when it was all taken away, they were devastated. But when, when, when the worldly possessions aren't all you have, and God is everything to you, it can all be taken away. And you can still have a joy that passes all understanding. Is our name written in the book, Brother Ricky? Me and Brother Ricky are just talking about this. What does it matter if everything's taken away from us? If our name is written, if God has written our name down, we may be nobody to the world, but we're somebody to God. What really matters? So this is what it means when it says all things work good to them who love him. See, the world is like, what do you mean good? You're, you've lost everything. You live in a third world country. We know whatever. You know, you can put it all in. The world, what it values, God doesn't value. We know it's not big houses or great health or wealth. Or anything that pertains to this world because the world is passing away. And many tender believers never had anything the world offered. But that didn't stop the mercy of God from being in them, on them. God's mercies were still on them. We must get up high enough to see that there's something much bigger than this world. Here and now. I want to use an example of this. The Lord showed us this. Luke 16, 19 through 31, we have a, an example. Now the world, it has a view of success. And then we have a God's view of success. We, we have success stories. The accounts that God has shown us. You want to know what I think is successful? Here God's going to show us. Lazarus was a homeless man full of sores. Dogs came and licked his sores. The rich man, very wealthy, every day did very well for himself. There's even people in churches today that would say, oh, the rich man was blessed. And the Lazarus, he wasn't blessed. Well, let me tell you something. From the world's view, that's very true. Lazarus, all his days, it was not, did not go well for him while he was here. But then, you get a view of what happens after we leave here. 
and that success stories change. They get reversed. They get turned around. The least becomes a first, and the first becomes the least. All of a sudden, Lazarus is getting escorted by angels. Angels? It took one angel to defeat a whole army, brother. And I don't even think he broke a sweat. But they said angels came to escort Lazarus. Amen. Angels are very special, brother. God doesn't just throw out angels anywhere just to do anything. But he sent them to escort him all the way to the bosom of Abraham. This is tender, brother. Amen. This is mercy, brother. Oh, to be Lazarus at that time. Escorted by these angels, taken to the bosom of, a of Abraham to be comforted. He was never comforted. His only comfort was the dogs licking his sores. However you want to see that, brother, and that was as about as low as you can get. You can't get much lower than disease-ridden. And the, the most you would want in this world is some crumbs off the rich man's table. But the rich man... I don't see a lot of mercy here with the mercy man. To the grave with him. To hell with him. Oh, Abraham, show me some mercy. Just take Lazarus and dip it. Lazarus ain't serving you anymore, brother. He's not coming down to serve you. He's already had his bad days. But it was only for, it was only for a time. And now, he is, in, he is in glory. No mercy shown to the rich man. He asked for mercy, didn't he? Read that comment. He says, show me some mercy. No mercy. His desire, Lazarus' desire was to be fed crumbs. But he's not being fed crumbs anymore, brethren. We cannot live in this world as if this world was the main thing. When you are making decisions on how to live and where to go, make it in this view, brethren, that the world is going to pass away. And you do not want to be like the rich man. Right now, we are preparing for glory. After all Lazarus went through, it was only for a time. So what we're going through, brethren, as you make sacrifices, as you present your body as a living sacrifice to holy and acceptable to God, and the world will laugh at you, the world will scoff at you, it will. If you present yourself as a living sacrifice to God, it won't take long for the world to scoff at you. But know this, they're helping you because they're saying, when they, every time they scoff, and every, kind, every time they, they, they turn their own nose up at you, remember this. It's a reminder that you're on the right track. Amen. God is showing us his mercy daily. Every day that you can get up and put your armor on. Every day that you get up and put your armor on and crucify the flesh. And things come to your mind that you know do not please God. And you push those away. You find that's a, that's mercy that God has given you to do that. Divine mercy is abundant to all who love God and walk in the light as He is in the light. Because we know what happens then, brethren. We do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Stay out of the darkness. Stay out of the filth. Flee from the evil, Amen. and you will find mercies in God. Amen. Faith will be honored by God. He gives you the faith, and then you take what he gives you, and then he lets you keep it, and he honors that. And then he gives you more. What a good deal that is, huh? You're not going to find a better deal in, in the world. The world's not going to give you a deal. They'll, they'll make it look like a deal. You ever been to a used car salesman? Oh, I got a deal for you. Come with me, brother. Come here. Oh, he doesn't call you brother. Come here. I got a deal for you. I was saving this one just for you.
God's not like the used car salesman. All who eagerly seek and run after God are blessed and show mercy. You will be wasting your time to search through the scriptures to find, is there anywhere where someone ran after God and God didn't show them mercy? It's a waste of time. We have a merciful God, that's why. If you want to live holy and righteous, then God's mercies are for you. We are seeing how God is. If you have a real desire to please God, but feel like you have areas of weakness, but you have a desire to please God, God will give you what you need. His mercy will be on you to give you what you need to be able to fulfill those desires to please him. God can and will have mercy on a good and honest heart and send grace to do a great work. For all that only want to please themselves and not live for God but to live for themselves, there's no mercy there. There is no mercy. I'm not even going to tell you. Sorry. I'm just telling you. There's no mercy. We saw in the rich man, he asked for mercy, but it was too late. See, the world will say, oh, no, God loves everybody. Well, you know, he sent his son to die, so everybody has the opportunity, but you reject his son. No mercy. We have access now to God's mercies, to live holy and righteous right now. Woe to anyone who ignores this and does not present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. It doesn't matter if it's me or it's Brother Given, or who it is. If you wake up one morning and you decide, well, I'm just going to go ahead and live for myself today. Woe to you, brother. Woe. Take heed. Your next minute could be gone. You thought you had the whole day. You don't have the whole day. Within a moment, you could be gone and taken up. Woe to anyone who ignores this. We don't even want to think about the wrath of God that's building up for the wicked. We don't even want to think about it. To think about it bring, just brings chills to you to be a part of it. Wrath and judgment may move men. The reason I don't speak a lot about that the reason I don't think you should speak a lot about the wrath of God is because it will move men for a little while. But see, this mercy is very appealing. When you see God's mercy and his gentleness, it does more for your spirit than wrath. Now, wrath does work. When you, you talk to the ungodly, I've got, I've got people I've, who has come with me at work, and I talk to them about the wrath of God. I talk to them about judgment. I'm wanting to spark a little bit, but I know that's only a little bit. That's only a start. For you, brother, mercy, I know, is appealing. It's appealing to me. It keeps me going. But as we see God's mercies are for us, we are invigorated as believers in Christ Jesus to run with endurance all the way to glory. To make it to the end, we need more than just a spark that wrath will give us. Wrath will give us a spark. It'll give us a start. But we need endurance to run all the way to the end. And when we see how good God is and his mercy, just making it from day to day doesn't become enough for us anymore. Just meager. Well, I made it. At work, I got people I work with, he said, almost, got to, we got the weekend, almost a couple more days. This is what they look forward to, just the weekend. Amen. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. John 10, 10. Our rejoicing may be 
more abundant in Jesus Christ. This is a lot different than just getting by, brethren. See what the mercies of God can do for us? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercies hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1, 3. Brethren, we have a good God. We don't have a God that's looking to pour out his wrath He's looking to pour out mercy. That's what he was doing in Christ Jesus. He was making a way so that he can show how merciful he really is. Amen. When we see his mercy, it gives us a lively hope. We don't have to get up here and jump around. And I see I did that. I, first of all, I, the first thing I did is I, I sought out some people that were I thought we were excited and jumping around. And I went to a tent revival and they were laughing in the Holy Spirit and falling in the dirt and rolling around like dogs. And I was like, what are you doing? I got to get out of here. God doesn't want us to be rolling around like dogs. We were rolling around like dogs when he found us. He picked us up and brushed us off and cleaned us up. And told us who we are, you're a king and priest. In the world we see death and destruction. By the mercies of God, we see life in Christ. It's by the mercies of God that we can and are, we are willing, willing to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We see how good God is to us. And we are moved to please him. I've learned this through my children. When I tell them how well they're doing, they're eager to please me. The Lord does that with us. He's a good God. And he's pleased when we do well. And he shows mercy on us. And that, and that gives us strength and, and lively hope and invigorates us to do well. We become driven like Christ to say, not my will, but we're eager to say, thine, O Lord, be done. God knows how weak and fragile we are. But he is merciful to all who love him. This is why beating up each other doesn't work very well. I've been to churches that beat up each other. They tell every, each other, no, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. What happens when you come in the presence of God, all of a sudden you see things clearly, and you know what's expected of you. You, you don't need somebody to tell you to clean up your act. You're eager to, be, to present yourself as a living sacrifice. And then, when you present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy unto God, oh, you start seeing things a whole different way. Fig leaves aren't good enough anymore. We want to be presentable to our God. So we remind each other. That's what we're doing this, for three days here. This is what we're doing. We're reminding each other of God's abundant mercies. Every time somebody got up here, I got mercies that's going through my mind, and everything that somebody was saying to me it was filtered through mercies, mercies. Mer He's merciful. And every one of these sermons were just filled with mercy. So we remind each other of God's abundant mercies toward all who seek him. We will all become better seekers. Better doers. No longer do we have to be told to do. We're eager to do. When we seek to please God and not men, troubles begin to fall away. Our burdens become lighter so we can run faster and harder 
And we could, we're free to do the will of God. To be, we, we, we are filled with the Spirit of God. We're able to please Him no longer being a hindrance to God and His people. But we're able to fly like eagles. Things that gave us problems are not even on our radar anymore. We become too consumed with pleasing our God. So let nothing become our main focus but to, sa to sacrifice, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Let us desire to please him. Yes, we have, to, we have, we have things that we have to do in the world. But this is not our main focus. Pleasing our God and having everything else in our lives line up with that. This is, this, this is what we should be doing. And we have mercy to do it. Thank you, brethren.